I'm actually looking forward to going through this material. So this is, uh, it's been a while since I've looked at it, so it's a pleasure to go through this. You can find um, all of this on YouTube, Todd McLeod, and uh, if you're looking for that. And then also the entire course is here on Greater Commons. So bam, go, go web dev, check it out. All right, so we are looking at string to HTML. So we have this thing here, and the beginning of templating is we could just look and we could see, okay, I've got a variable and the name is assigned to it. And then we have another string right here, right? And this string is a raw string literal. So in Go, you could create strings with double quotes, and you could also create strings with back ticks. And so I'm just gonna print all of this out right like I run this and what's what's gonna happen when I run this is it's going to create this text and it's going to insert my name right there you can see this is where I have some text and I'm gonna concatenate that with the variable name and then concatenate that with this text and watch what I get for output so let me start my terminal and I'm gonna cd into uh, go source GitHub goes to 11, Golang web dev, and we are in 00301, and go run main.go. So boom, just dumped it out. That's kind of cool, right? Like that is a basic HTML page. And so that's where it's like starting to think about this in terms of like just programming. Like, look, you know all that. How many people are like tremendously relieved? It's like, well, that's simple. That's just like two variables and string concatenation and print it out. How many people that looks completely understandable to you? Eric, Jeff, Roxanne. I, your name was just come, taking a while to come from Ram. All right. Eric, you over here, you got it? Elena. Yeah, Titch 50. And Z. You good? And I'm spacing on your name because you weren't here. Jasmine! Awesome. See? That's great. As soon as I thought, as soon as I owned it, it came. You weren't here last week, were you? Yeah. Were you here the week before? All right. Good. All right. So uh, most of us are there, and the rest of us will keep getting exposed, and it'll start to make sense. It didn't make sense to me the first time I was learning programming. And there's still a ton which doesn't make sense. So the next step would be... Okay, I'm going to do the same thing, name, and instead of fumped print line, I'm going to fumped sprint, which is string print. It's printing to a string, and if I want to see how that's defined, I could just click on it by holding down command, and it takes me straight to the definition. And, uh, and this is in, this is the, the Go that was used to create the Go programming language. So you're looking at the code that created the Go programming language, this is the exact same thing you'll see in the documentation when you go to GoDoc. Bumped. Nice of it to come up for us. And uh, we look at the index and we have Sprint. Sprint right there. And Sprint is string print. Sprint formats using the default formats for its operands and returns the resulting string. Spaces are added between operands when neither is a string. So it's, this is the func signature. It's a function with the identifier sprint. It takes a variadic parameter of any type, the empty interface is any type, and these little dots tell us it's variadic, and, uh, and it returns a string. So this text right here, sprint formats using the default, sprint formats using the default formats for its operands and returns the resulting string. Spaces are added spaces are added between operands when neither is a string, when neither is a string. So Go actually builds its source documentation off of comments. So when you have a function like sprint, you want to start comments right above that function and you start it with the name of the function and then there's some commands that you could run that will build documentation including examples and everything. Okay, That's all you need to know about at this point. And you can learn more about documentation in this course, in the Go course. Towards the end of that course, we go into it. 
But since we're just focusing on web dev here and not the language, we've learned what we need to know already about the language so that we could jump into web dev. So the first thing here is we have string printing, which returns a string. And so we're returning a string and we're assigning it here. What string are we re returning? We're going to return all of this, which is exactly the same thing we had before. Only now instead of printing it to standard out, which is what this first program did, it just printed it to standard out, right? Printed it to standard out. So we took all of that and printed it to standard out. If I wanted to, I could have dropped this right all where TPL is and gotten rid of that TPL part because you might be looking at that and saying, hey, you assigned that to a variable. That was just text assigned to a variable. Now I'm printing this, which will insert the variable there, assign it to there, and then down here, I'm going to do a little fancy Go code, and I'm going to, from the OS package, I'm going to call create. What does create do at the OS package? So I'm going to go to OS, and I'm going to look at the index. I'm going to search for create, and I have here, just looking, are there any other creates in the index? No other creates. And I have here under type file, I have a function create, which will take in a name, which is of type string, right? So this is the identifier, but notice the identifier is named name, and that helps us understand and read and self-document the code. So func create takes in a variable that is of type string, which is going to be the name of the file. It returns a pointer to a file and an error. A pointer to a file and an error. So when we look at that, we have OS create, and I'm passing in a string, which will become the name of the file, and it's going to return a new a file and an error, and I called it NF for new file. For error, all you need to know at this point is we're going to do something like if error is not equal to nil, then we're going to log fatal, we're going to shut our program down, and, uh, and we're going to say error creating file and then report that error, and we're done. So you can look up here at the imports, I have package log. So let's just go take a look at that for a second. And so this is code that's all already written. You just get to use it. And we were using fatal. Here's the index. So there's the index, right? And so we had log, log, fatal. And log fatal, fatal is equivalent to print followed by call to OS exit one. So OS exit, we'll also look at that in a second. So OS, we are at log. Uh, fatal right here, fatal F, fatal line. Fatal is equivalent to print followed by call to OS exit one, right? And so if we look at OS exit, and this is literally how you learn to use the Go language. Here we have OS, package OS exit and exit causes the current program to exit with the given status code conventionally code zero indicates success non-zero and error the program terminates immediately deferred functions are not run okay so i come back here and i see this and i've got os create a file called index return a new file and an error if the error is not nil meaning there is an error we're going to shut this program down with log.fatal, and it's going to print out error creating file. It'll print out the error, and then after we've done this, we're going to defer new file close. So closing resources in programming. Closing resources in programming. Closing resources in programming. Why would you want to close resources? in programming. Who knows? I will let you contemplate that and we will pick this up in the next video. Hit like and subscribe. That helps other people find these videos.